Okay, keeping in the, uh, the theme of uh, the sun and its off awesome powers, uh, we'd like to welcome uh, excuse me, uh, Jan Van Diesen. He's the CEO of SRB. Jan? Good day. Well, actually, I'm not the CEO, but okay. <laughs> yes. Are we starting? <laughs> I wait. <laughs> no, it's not working. It's perfectly because I have more sheets. <laughs> yes, I understand it. Um, to give an idea, uh, does everybody know what CERN is? Nuclear Institute for Research. You know them all because what they invented, you are using all. It's the World Wide Web. But that's one thing. Um, we have some patents from this uh, well institute. And uh, what we're using from them is ultra-high vacuum, getter pump, surface, select codes, sealed metal glass, all very interesting. But why? Um, I miss one picture, but we see it later, I think. Something happened on the way. This is, uh, we, there up front on the right, we have a collector, and that's ours. We have an ultra-high vacuum collector, and we use it for solar thermal. Ultra-high vacuum means that we have a pressure of 10,000 kilos per square meter. We use that vacuum to maintain the temperature. Nobody else in this world has a collector this big with so much pressure on it. And it's very um, accurate, it's very good to have this because now you can have diffuse light and direct light and use them both to make heat. Ah, here it is, <laughs> wrong place. <laughs> This is the flat collector. Why do we use a flat collector? Because when it's flat, you can catch more sun. So it's very easy. Um, the concentration factor is 2.68, and the stagnation temperature, well, it wasn't Celsius, but now it's 750 degrees Fahrenheit. That's our stagnation temperature, without tracking and without mirrors, if necessary. This is our market. Um, there you see the temperatures upstairs. You see a normal collector can go to 137 or 140 or... And then you have the tracking part, which goes from 390 to 750. Between there is a very interesting market. Half of all the energy in Europe is heat. Half. 25% is electricity, 25% is transportation. Half. From that half, one third is between 137 Fahrenheit and 390 Fahrenheit. So there's a big market. This is the collector. Again, how it is built, four absorbers. I do it a little bit with a little bit speed because I want to show you something. We have a getter pump into it. Uh, that's for the technicians, but that's how we maintain our vacuum. That is one of the secrets. We do the glass and the metal together. And this is how it looks. Then we get the piping. Radiation comes in. Oh, that was too fast. <laughs> because the last one Wait a second. Can you help me out? We have to go through it. The last one is the interesting part because there you can see that the vacuum is really working because I can tell you anything I want but to prove it is something else. And as I said before, there is nothing 
as good as vacuum to maintain the temperature inside. This is it. This is not 80 degrees Fahrenheit, this is 80 degrees Celsius. Through the snow, indirect sunlight is coming in, that's diffuse light. Diffuse light is coming in and it's still 80 degrees Celsius inside this collector. So you can imagine if one third, or let's say 50% of all energy is heat in Europe, this is a great invention. And what we are searching for are strategic partners. So not hit and run investors, or I don't know how you call it, but that's how we call it. <laughs> but we need strategic investors who want to go with us for let's say five, six years to make this collector cheaper every day. We can produce and we have the technology. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hands up. Any high questions? For Jan. If you're, sir, if you're not the CEO, I'm sorry for uh, for putting you in that position. But uh, what is your what's your title with the company? <laughs> I am uh, well. To be honest, I'm the director in the Netherlands, and we are doing the development. So we are doing uh, making sure that there are uh, applications for it, and that's our job. But also to be re represent as a B international. Got it. Heads up high. What I'm looking at right now, what is the heat radius for that? In other words, what it's collecting, and I'm looking at 80.5 or whatever it is. Um, where is that radiating? Sorry, where was that? In other words, if this were to be used um, in combination with the sol solar panels that you showed, yeah. would that, is this heating an entire home? Is this yes. heating an entire office well, building or <laughs> what is uh, this heating? It's depending on the, how large your home is. <laughs> but let's put it this way, um, with 1,000 watt iteration, mm -hmm. and you have it five square meters with the two mirrors, we produce 2,070 watts, 180 degrees, 600 liters an hour. So that's a large amount. But this is only stagnation temperature, so nothing goes through it. But let's say you put some water through it, at the end, after the installation, it will still be around 60 degrees, which I have to recalculate what it is in Fahrenheit, but you will lose about uh, 30%. So yes, you can uh, most of the time heat your home, especially when it's a new one. Yes. So I'm, I'm a little bit confused, so maybe you can explain a little bit to me. Only a little bit. So, um, so your solar collector is not a solar panel, right? So you, what you're doing is you heat water inside your device. And then the trick is with the hive vacuum is that you keep the heat inside so you have longer time to, to pass that heat to the water or the fluid that you run through your system. Mm -hmm. So I do understand correctly. Or, or do I, because... <coughs> yeah, what you... What you it's not that, that the you make a more efficient uh, transfer from the heat from the sun to your, your pipes, or, but it's just a vacuum that makes the heat be there longer. No, no, we do both. Um, yes, the absorbers are special, and yes, we use the ultra high vacuum, but with vacuum, there is the problem, you will lose it. And the trick is to maintain it there for 20 years. And that answer, that's what we have. And we use them for the same technology as they use at CERN. So if you see that uh, 28 kilometers around the circle, they use ultra-high vacuum for the monocles. That's the same technology. The only thing is here it's in the collector. Any other question? Yeah. One. I mean, I, w I was wondering, uh, you, you say, um, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to hit uh, your home with how many panels? Is that one panel, two panels? How many, uh, I mean, it, it, what scale, I guess? Yeah, the, the, the problem is not the heating. Our problem is most of the time uh, where we should put the heat. In the summer, you can imagine, this goes to a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit easily. So then you also have to do some cooling or you have to do something with the heat. 
that's our problem. So most of the time we are looking at the industry. The industry is the most important for us and it's the, the guys who use the most energy. Is, is your main uh, customer the consumer or is it, is it no, corporate it's or municipal? Is it government? No, the, yes, it, it, it's always big, <laughs> and it's, uh, but it's not consumer at this moment. Maybe in the future, but uh, at this time, it's, it's only industry or large applications. And right now, who are your biggest clients or customers that are using the, the service? The yeah, at, at this time, uh, well, the biggest uh, clients is in Spain. It's for heating and for cooling, because with absorption and adsorption, you can also do cooling. So therefore, we use the heat then. And we've got three seconds left. Does anybody with a quick one? Yeah. <laughs> when do you expect to reach uh, grid parity? Um, <laughs> depends on what you see as grid parity, but let's say our target is to go, uh, the first stage is to go to 8 cents uh, per kilowatt, so euro cents in uh, Europe. It's 5,000 watt iteration. The second stage will be 4 cents. So it will be still be a little bit more expensive than you just paid here. But uh, as my uh, uh, colleague said before, we are paying in the Netherlands and also in Europe a lot more. So uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.